patient is prepped and draped in the routine, sterile fashion. Like the subscriber, it's either going to work or it ain't going to work. A simple way to look at it. So let me tell you where we're at and how I got to that point with a leak down tester. So the engine ran, you saw that, I was happy with everything. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just <clears throat> index all the plugs, which Warren Johnson said, by the way, is my pistons aren't done right if I have to index my plugs. It's just his thoughts anyways. But you know me, I can't leave well enough alone. So I said, listen, I gotta take the borescope, look down in there and see what we got, make sure everything looks good. You know, because we reused the rings on this and Pistons were cleaned up. All we did is have the crank fixed by Performance Crankshaft in Michigan. Thank you, Arlen Brown, for that. And we put new coated rod and main bearings. That was it. Bob Beach just cleaned up the rings, cleaned up the pistons. Very brushed it, I think. Bingo. He said the rings weren't even broken, so we put them back in. So I said, well, I got to look down the bores and see what it looks like. Every cylinder looks perfect, man. I mean, I can't believe it. Except for number two. Number two had some oil in it. So I got my syringe, got in there, and I sucked it out. Now, when I look at that, there's some on the rag that I used. I, I cleaned it out of there. So I probably have about, that's about almost 5 cc. So probably about 3.5, I'd say 4 cc's with what I wasted, the tube and everything. So where did it come from? Well, it didn't come from the rings, I don't think because it never smoked, you saw it run, it ran awesome. You know, once I got the needle and seat squared away. So I said, well, the oil looking at it, I smelled it, it doesn't look burned. It doesn't look like it went through the engine. It looks like it's leaking from above. And when I looked in there, the borescope almost looks like a drop can hit the piston. And if there's a piston sits and there's a little oil trough, which I cleaned out and sucked out, which is that air, that oil right there. So it, it could be from a valve leaking, a valve guide, intake maybe. I don't know. The first thing I want to do is make sure it isn't the rings since I, I reused those. Now, I don't think it is. It runs too good. So let's go and do a leak down test on it and see what we find out. Now, with that said, I want to give a big shout out to Lake Speed Jr., the motor oil geek. You got to check his channel out, guys. He's grown amazing. 190,000 subscribers with only, I don't know what it had for videos, 58 or something, not many. But people like to hear Lake talk. They like to hear what he has to say, and he has a lot of experience. Now, I talked to Lake recently, and I want to give you a big shout out again, Lake. Thank you for sending me this brand new electric ring grinder. I appreciate that. He sent it to Drag Boss Garage for future builds. It's a nice piece right there. So thank you for that. <laughs> I may need it on this, depending on what we find out with this leak down tester. Because, you know, you're doing a leak down tester to find out where is that leak. Is it the rings? Or is it the valves that are leaking or somewhere else? So thank you for that Lake Speed. And this is a, a Summit model. And I'll put a link on there if you're interested in any of that stuff. This is OTC Soder Leakage Tester Kit 5609. I'll do the same with this. This is what I used to do a leak down. I did a video here and I'll see if I can put it up here or it'll be at the end. And you can see how I did a leak down test right from the beginning. Because I'm not going to go through all that. I'm just going to explain it while we do it. So let's go check it out. So I'll tell you, I mean, I've been through the ringer with this and you know it. It's like it fights every inch of the way, tooth and nail, but whatever, that's racing and that's, I'm not the only guy that's been through it after I see all the comments that you guys put on there. And I appreciate that. Tell me the hard times you've been through and experiencing what I've been through. So it, it ain't that big of a deal, it makes it easier. You know, that it ain't only happening to me. The theory is you have air coming in with a set pressure. You don't want to go any more than 100 PSI on this particular gauge set. You don't need any more. 100 PSI here, then you read it over here. The difference between the two tells you the leak down. So, and then I'll put in the little chart that they give you in, in the kit. But you guys can kind of figure that out. You know, if you got, you know, 20% leak down, you got an issue going on. You know, 15, you better be thinking about stuff. Let's see what we got. I like to see, you know, maybe six, eight. <laughs> I don't know, it's a fresh motor on one hand, but the rings are used. So let's put the pressure in. There's 10, but they're already equal. 10, 20. Now we hear something leaking. Sounds like through the intake. But it sounds marginal. 
if that thing was leaking, you'd be seeing. Now remember, you got to be on top dead center on compression when you're checking this. You don't want the crank taking a ride. Something stupid happening. So there it is there. I got, I don't know, let me see. That's like, I'll put 90. 90% and I got, it looks like almost 87 and a half. No, 88 to 89. I got about 89. But now it's gone up a little bit. So let's go to, let's go to, let's go to 100. See if it'll go. I don't know if my compressor will go that high. So there it is. What do we got? That's 100 PSI right here. And here it's 98 percent. I mean 98 PSI, which relates to what? Two percent. So I think we're pretty good there. Now I can hear it a tiny bit coming through. So let's see what we can find out. Set that baby here. Patient asleep. Now, so that tells me it ain't the rings. Now, I can hear that going down into the pan. And when I hear it coming here, that's the drain back hole. So it's going down into the pan. So now things to think about with this test. You know, I just did it again and looked at it at 100. Now it reads 96% or 96 PSI. So that's like 4%. No big deal. This, this is fine. That's telling me that it's not the rings being a big problem. Now it's probably leaking down past there. This thing is cold. It's not warm. You're supposed to do this when it's hot. I just want to do it as a screening test, so to speak, so I can keep going, you know, because I don't think it's going to be an issue. I'm going to go ahead and pull the carb off and look in the intake ports and see, you know, if there's an area like if I could leak by a push rod tube. I don't know. We'll take a peek at it and see. But at least I know it's not a big major ring thing. So what I'll do is after I I'll take the carburetor off and then I'm going to take the scope and I want to look inside the ports and take a peek. I'm also going to pull these headers off and take a peek at that. You think about it and actually, you know, I, I talked to Warren Johnson on the way to work. It's kind of funny. And um, we were talking about this and he said, you know what? The thing's just sitting on a run stand. You got no cylinder pressure. You got nothing. You know, that motor, it needs to be beat on a little. And so that's what he said. He said, put it in the car and, and race it. So racing starts on Friday, which is today's Wednesday. There ain't no way I'm going to make it. I'm not going to rush. Uh, that's when I always have problems. I just want to make sure that I don't have any problems before I put it back in. And that's one thing I can say about this Mighty Mop. Once we figure out a couple of idiosyncrasies to, to come up with a solution, which Doug Schmidt had mentioned about a bell housing welded on to the arms of the engine hoist, so then it will be more mobile. You won't have to unbolt the bell housing. I think I have a great plan for that. And a better start or, and or a better starter bracket. Because that starter bracket is way off. I don't know who made that or where they come up with that. Here's a couple of pictures and then you decide. But let me get some of this, get that other valve cover off. Let me get this evaluated and we can get it back in the dang car. So I went through and I did all the lash and checked everything. And I also like to check the rockers and make sure they're lined up with the valve tip and not out to the side and they're all mint. That is key for high RPM, I'm telling you. Can't have the valve <coughs> rocker tip off to the side. Next, I just have to put the valve covers on, put the plugs in. I'm gonna pull the carb off anyways to look down there and I'm not gonna have the carb on when I put the engine in. I'm just gonna have the plate cover it up. I don't need that up there, extra room in the way. And pull the headers. And we'll look up that port too to make sure there's nothing leaking down in that way. But I'm running this thing, it's, it's gonna go send it. So let me show you what it looks like inside this intake manifold. I've made some uh, short on this before, but you guys probably haven't seen it. So Darren had done 
the intake manifold and the cylinder heads on this. So they're flowing, geez, I don't I remember what they flow. Like three, 385 CFM at 600. So they're close to 400 CFM. He said they can make 800 horsepower with the right combination, which means this thing is only like 13.3. Compression needs about 14.5. Bigger cam, it's got a too small of a cam. But I'd like to do that, put that cam in there, <clears throat> the right one, and bring that compression up. And so he talked about it on the anti-reversion video, the spacers. So that's what I'm gonna show you because he did this and he set it up just, just like on the video. So I have everything marked and weird like that back so it goes the same way every time. But here's the, uh, I, I think this is the seven degree plate. And I'm, yeah. So it's aluminum plate. Now here's the back, see? And I'm pretty sure he said that that was seven degree taper. And Darren said, this is key, especially for pressure recovery with this setup. You wanna make sure you use it the same way that I set it. And that's what I, that's why I marked it off. But I'll show you down here with the camera and you can get a better look and, and see how this tapers right in. Darren did a lot of work to this intake. You really can't see it. He's good at hiding things. But you can kind of see here, those runners have all been moved. You can see there, they don't, they look like they got a little modification to them, maybe a little filler. Here's what it looks like down inside. So it runs pretty well, just like this is what it looks like. I'm gonna run it again and pull the carb and look at it, but it usually is clean just like this. I do notice that that Q16 does stain the intake sometimes. You can, and it, I think it leaves some residue. Like there might be some right there if you look. You get a better look at that. Now, you add that along with this spacer here. Like I said, I have it marked so I know how it goes. So that fits like that. And then this, I just have another gasket over here. And I find these Kemetic gaskets work well. That blue stuff, I don't like any of those colored gaskets. Now, one thing I noticed, I did switch those needle and seats on the carburetor to the 120 steel because I had a Q16 and they kind of corroded what was in there, which was a Viton based needle and seat. Viton is not good and compatible with alcohol, E85 probably, probably even Q16 doesn't like too much. But I noticed after I put the steel jets in there, I looked in the intake and I saw it looked like the throttle bores were wet, like it was leaking, maybe through the needle and seat, I don't know. I took it out and I put back the 120 Vitons and I'll just make it a serviceable item on the season, I'll pull the carb apart, put new ones in if I have to, but I don't want the thing flooding or having a problem sitting in the needle and seat leaking. I just need to put some heat in this thing and like Warren Johnson said, torture it a little, to see what it does. That's our plan. All right guys, well you saw the picture of it on the cherry picker, now it's in there and everything's tight. Pretty much everything's done except for the headers. And I wanted to show you those. People had asked about that and they wanted to see it. So I said, let me show you them on the video because it's kind of hard to see them when they're all installed looking tight. But Star Vacuum took care of the vacuum pump. They rebuilt that. He sent me all new lines, hoses. They look great. Thanks, guys. So let's come over here. So here's the headers. Now these are stainless steel headers that are custom made by my buddy JP, who actually doesn't live in Ohio anymore. He moved to Mississippi, does chassis work down there. But these are what they are, they're stainless steel. Now these are two inch primaries, step up to two and an eighth. And then the merge collector that I have is a cone engineering. Now these are seven degree merge collectors. I think they come in seven, nine and 12. 
but the merge is actually here, and that's it's the degree of that cone. So at this point, seven degree is good is better for low end if I remember correctly. You guys can comment on that. But I definitely think the merge collector picks up on the 60, at least with this combination. Overall, the headers themselves, going from a one and seven eighths to these two inch to two and an eighth, picked up to almost 25 horsepower, as opposed to these. See what DBG looks like, there's a big mess everywhere. We had time to clean anything. So these headers right here, this set. Now those are beautiful to put in. They're nothing to put in. They fit perfect. And those fit in an early Mustang chassis, A3 heads with a Shock Towers Cup pack. But they were good to 752. They're kind of limited right there. I think that they're too small. One and seven eighths after that, 750, you need something bigger, baby.